Hi, this is Tom from Fantasia Music and today we will create an adventurous action track. Hello and welcome to another video. Before we start, let me mention one thing. I've decided to share the MIDI files of all my YouTube videos, including all the automation data with you. You can download them in the link of each video description at buymeacoffee.com, including this one. Okay, so here we are with another track, with another video. And once again, I will show you exactly the way that I composed this piece, how I started, what was the first instrument that I um, recorded, created. And so we start right away. Let me collapse every folder that we don't need for the moment. Because I started with a percussion in this piece, I just wanted to write something with a bit faster uh, tempo and a bit more powerful drums. So I chose the 8DU percussion. Um, at first, let's have a look at the tempo. Yeah, we have the track is written in 146 uh, beats per minute. Um, we ha don't have any tempo changes here, yeah? Just to, to keep it simple. Okay, let's start right away with our first instrument track. I started this piece with an instance of 8 Dio's epic frame drum. I used an individual frame drum, frame drum number one for this. And I found this on one of their walkthrough videos from 8 Dio, how they created their own drum roll and that sounded pretty cool to me and I tried to recreate this only using the velocity slightly going up. Just have a listen how it sounds on its own. So it's a pretty cool sound I think and let me mention at this stage that all of the percussion is not processed in any other way. Okay, that's not correct because I have some plugins going on on my master bus, but we will take a look at this later, okay? But there's no individual processing like external reverb or any EQ here. That's really the sound uh, right out of the box. And yeah, that was my starting point. I pretty much copy and pasted this four times. So you can see only the last section has an additional um, drum roll just to yeah, to make it round at the end. Um, but everything else is pretty much copy and paste. So that was my first instrument drag. And then let's see what we have in our second percussion track. Again, an instance of 8 Dio's epic frame drum, but this time I used an ensemble, the master patch here, um, and the main setting and with this I created a my own pattern that sounds like this okay so you get the idea also pretty simple um, pretty much copy and paste. I created the first part with one low note in there. And copied this 
for all the eight bars. And together with the drum rolls, it sounds like this. So I think that already sounds pretty cool. Um, this is already a good starting point, yeah? If you are at that stage, uh, I was like, okay, that sounds already pretty cool. But of course, I had to add a bit more of the percussion. And so let's see what I did in the next instrument track. I used another epic frame drum patch again an individual patch but this time the frame drum number two and let's hear what i created there so you can see also pretty much copy and paste, but this gives another dimension to the whole percussion. If we solo the first three of our instrument, uh, of our percussion tracks that we have here. So that's already pretty interesting and that's almost everything that we have for the percussion. I only wanted to add another touch. I wanted to give this another uh, variation there so that we don't have like eight bars, um, the same percussion going on, almost sounding like a loop. I wanted to add something in the higher registers. So I chose an instance of 8 Dio's epic frame drum and again the master and main patch and alone this sounds like so you can hear it's not much but it's playing in the higher registers and for me, that's very important if I want to have a full sounding percussion line that we have something going on in all the registers. Of course, there can be exceptions when you have like other instruments playing in the higher um, uh, ranges like violins and you want them to shine, then possibly you don't need that higher um, drums. But in this case, I wanted it and all together it sounds like this so I think that's pretty cool and I think I started the track to be honest with this percussion track but then a little bit later on I thought like and many other composers may hate me for that but um, I felt like something in the in the lower registers is missing I still need that low percussion um, that gives a bit more body to the whole percussion track but you have to, to really be careful because um, with a lower percussion, your track gets muddy very fast. And you can also start with the percussion that we have right here. And later on, if you realize there is something missing, um, you can add a little bit of that lower percussion. But I'm a great fan of low percussion. And so I added another instance and this time I chose the Epic Tom Ensembles. Um, they are also from ADO. I used the main low patch, yeah, like I told you. And 
this time I was very lazy. I used a loop. Let's listen to the loop on its own. Just wait here. Okay, so it's not much, but I felt like that's what I was missing in the percussion uh, track, okay? I will mute it and just add it afterwards. Listen to the difference. Ah, sorry, that was uh, too much. It's not much, but I think if you're listening on headphones or good uh, speakers, um, you can definitely hear the difference. Let me one more time play it, starting with the low part as well, and then I take it out. So I think this way you uh, can hear it definitely, um, the difference. So yeah, that's pretty much our complete percussion track. And I don't know if I missed anything, but I think we can go on with the next um instrument like i told you in the percussion there is no individual processing going on only on the master bus but i will talk about this at a later point okay so the next thing that i added i used the strings from pacific um no sorry not the strings from pacific it's the pacific ensemble strings from performance samples yeah that's uh, how they call them um, it's an amazing library I really like their strings and I haven't used them that much since I bought it um, that's why I chose that library for this queue and at first I tried to find a chord progression um, that I want to have here in this whole piece and that's why I started with the Chelly Whisper Sustains that's how they call their patch and you can see my chord progression and even the automation but like I told you you can also download the MIDI including that automation data um, in the description but yeah that was pretty much the next instrument that I added and I will show you the uh, instrument settings that I used here I made them very loud here actually because yes um, because I was lazy and didn't want to do it anywhere else here. Um, but let's listen the chords that I played in here to the percussion. Okay. You can see the chord progression on top here in the chord track. Um, what else can I say to this instrument track? I think I mentioned that already in my former videos, but I will repeat it one more time. If you go in and zoom in, you can see that I've not quantized all these notes very hard. They are slightly different and I often do that 
to make the instrument sound human uh, because if you have like an orchestra playing it's impossible that in a real orchestra every player will start at the exact same beat yeah of course they should start at the same beat but not at the same millisecond if you know what i mean so it's only human that there are slightly differences and in cubase there is a great feature that allows you to create your own quantize mode and if i zoom in i can show you this um, i already made my preset here i have two presets with variations included and then if i use this and press quantize a few times you can see that these instruments uh, that the notes are changing slightly yeah and this way you can mark everything and just press q for quantize and you already have that bit of human quantization yeah that's how i call it um yeah that's it pretty much and that was my starting point after i had finished the percussion so let's listen to this all together you almost can't hear the celli now um that's the reason for that is that i reduced it afterwards because i didn't want to um to be the cello sustain chords to be heard that much but they are still there in the background and they are like yeah the the main part of our whole track and then i added an instance of the double basses this was my next instrument you can see the settings here and by the way i used the same reverb uh, um, that i also um, showed you in my last videos the seventh haven reverb for this and let's see what i added for the double bass so the double bass is in this case playing this line here okay now let's listen to the double bass on its own And you can see I always used a similar modulation going up and down. Yeah, like the whole piece is written in that style. Um, together with the jelly and without the percussion, it sounds like this. So this is not very creative to be honest but i wanted to keep it simple for this video and some of you wrote that in my last um, videos in the comments that they are beginner composers and they like it um, how simple everything is all that's the reason for for keeping it simple yeah <laughs> um okay so the next thing that i added was an instance of the whisper sustain violins so again as you as i already mentioned in the percussion i wanted to have this for the higher register that there is something going on and yeah you can see also 
the interface here. It's the 16 violence patch from performance samples specific strings. And on its own, they sound like this. So you can see for the second part, it goes um, drastically higher because I wanted them to shine in the second part. Um, and in the first part, you almost do not realize them, but they are still there. Let's listen to the three of them. Okay, so you get the idea. This is something together with the drums. Um, that sounds already pretty interesting. Okay, so the next step that I did, I chose a main melody oh no sorry 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 i have to be honest i wanted to have a choir in this piece so the next thing that i added was the choir and you may hear this makes a huge difference um let's see what i used here i used audio imperia's chorus the women slow syllables patch and i turned off the reverb here and used my own one um, let's see the chords that i played here yes and let's listen to only the choir Okay, that is something that I really like, that gives a dramatic, cinematic touch to every composition. Um, now, one additional information, I, I will put it that you can see it. Um, it triggers the individual syllables starting with fa. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so you have seen four times fa and then it goes to key and that's, I chose that. You can use this um, via key switch down there, okay? So if you put it on C minus one, it is fa and every syllable has its own key switch. So I left it like four times, then everything stays like fa and then we go to key and it was just a matter of taste. I tried it out, what sounded good to me, and I pretty much liked it that it's not all staying eight syllables like fa, 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 but it gets, uh, it makes it r more real, uh, like a real performance if it changes. Let's listen one more time. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much the choir track. And together with the strings, it sounds like this.
So like I told you, a huge difference in my opinion. And let me show you one thing because I know there are always a lot of questions concerning what reverb did you use here and I will show you in a second this is the choir reverb yes um, I chose an instance from East West Spaces 2 um, the digital hall with 3.8 seconds. I can give you one tip at this stage because I by myself was also for a long time that kind of uh, composer that was like, wow, what reverb did he use that sounds so gorgeous? I just have to uh, have the same reverb and use it and I was like that for a long time and I think right now I almost own any reverb that's available out there. Um, it's great to have them, but I think you should focus much more on the composition and if you have something like Seventh Haven, Cinematic Rooms, East West Spaces, I think you can get the best out of every single one of them. That's just a personal tip that I want to give you because I think I could have saved some money uh, if I would have been satisfied with the reverb earlier. Yeah, but that's the way that we have it um, until this stage. So let's continue with our main part. So the next thing that I did, I added a melody. And for this, I used the usual Cinematic Studio strings and I tried to play the main melody, tried to create a main melody with their jelly patch. And yeah, let's see what I did here. So if we open the patch, you can see my melody line. And the melody plays like this. So that was pretty much the melody line and I wrote this melody after I had the chords that I chose. So let's just listen to the choir, the strings and this jelly all together. As you know, I'm a great fan of layering, so that's why I decided to layer the melody with the violins one octave higher, also from Cinematic Studio Strings. And if I mark them both, oh, you can see that's interesting. The violins even play the same, um, the same octave. So let's just listen to the violins. Oh no, that's not just the violins here. Only the jelly. So you get the idea, completely the same um, the same melody and the same octave only copy and paste it again so only the difference in playing the celli and the violins together so 
So you hear a difference. So it makes it much more thicker. And then finally I added another instance, but this time I think I, yes, copied it an octave higher, but playing the exact same um, line. Very simple again. Okay, let's listen to them all of the three cinematic studio strings together. Together with the rest of our um, strings that we already have and the choir. No, let's let's leave the choir out and just start with this. Okay, so that already sounds pretty cool. All together with the percussion sounds like this. Now that already sounds really good, but for those of you who have seen my other videos, um, they will know that I'm a great fan of fast playing spiccato strings. And that was my next step that I did. I started with the double basses and let's have a look what we have there in the double basses. Make it a little bit bigger so that you can see everything that's going on. It's a lot in the double basses. Let's listen. So there are also at the beginning playing individual notes and then in the second part I used chords playing there and again a tip for everyone who is starting out with music composition if you want to know which notes you want to play you can just click like your main chord line in this case let's take the jelly and you can see the white line um yeah what what notes are playing in this chord progression so it's pretty easy to to find the right notes that what i wanted to show you there um yeah that was the double bass um actually i can show you the instrument that i used here it's the pacific ensemble strings eight basses and the spiccato patch and you can see i use the decay of four milliseconds and together with the main strings and the choir oh let's let's leave the choir out just the strings and the double bass piccato sounds like this now that's pretty much for just the strings sorry now They are missing, it sounds like this. So I think you can hear it's a huge difference. Um, okay, and based on that double bass, spiccato notes, I added celli spiccato 
also again from Pacific, four milliseconds, the Celli Spiccato. And on its own, the Celli sound like this. Okay, let's layer the double bass here that you see there are some notes playing the same, uh, but the double bass is playing in some registers its different notes for the double bass. So let's listen to them together. So this also is a really simple spiccato progression, nothing special or too exotic, just very straightforward. Um, and I also, of course, wanted to have something in the higher register again. So you see, if I only put the violins and then the celli, they are playing in their own register and sound like this. So a little bit of variation this time, okay? So that you cannot say we are too boring uh, during the whole thing and you have to close this YouTube video. No, just joking. I hope you enjoy it. Um, let's listen to all the spiccato notes together. Okay, that's it. Together with all the strings, it sounds like this. Together with the choir, it sounds like this. If we, I can show you the difference of um, muting the spiccatos during the piece, um, that makes a huge difference. So that's a drastic change. Um, if we add the percussion and make that same comparison again, I will show you. So I think you can definitely hear the importance of that fast notes going on in the background. You have to be careful that they um, don't get too dominant, um, but all with the other instruments that we um, still add 
later on, <laughs> you um, will see that they sit very good in the in the whole piece and they are not too dominant. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I will close the percussion, the strings and also the choir and we can go for the brass. As you already realized, um, I was not concentrating or focusing on one specific library. I chose completely weird <laughs> the libraries that I want to use. And what I had in mind, I tried it out and was like, oh yeah, that sounds cool. That blends very good. So that's the reason why I have even two different brass libraries even if we have only three instrument tracks but for the start let's go with our first brass lane yeah i used here an instance of an instance of Spitfire Symphonic Brass, the long notes in the tree and the outrigger um, microphone mix. And they also played the chords that we have, I think, on our celli. But let's listen how these chords sound from the tenor trombones. You can see that there's a bit more modulation and expression going on but that's just because I, I wanted to sit the brass very good in the mix that it sounds the way I wanted it to sound. Let's listen how it sounds. Uh, once again too much sorry. Let's only focus on the brass. Okay, now it gets funny because you may ask what is going on with him? Why is he having like holes in here? <laughs> I didn't have that holes before. It looked like this. But the thing is, if when I had this on one instrument track, it suddenly did not play all the notes every time I went the playback yeah every time I played play I heard something different and that was the reason why I decided to be smarter than my CPU and smarter than the tenor trombones I copied duplicated this track and just um, yeah took those three parts out and made them in a separate line and together they sound like like this so the reason uh, why the system stopped playing was like i think the changes here are pretty fast and maybe also because of some overlaps here, um, I think I, it, it possibly would have been possible to, to tweak this, but um, I was like looking for a fast solution and now then I duplicated this and now I have two tracks and they played the way that I want just to uh, give you the idea why I did that. But yeah, that's it. Also... For the second instrument track, the same settings, tree and outrigger. Um, yeah, and together with the strings, this adds a nice and a very different color. Let's listen, I add it afterwards. So I think you can definitely hear it in the beginning, not that much, but it is there. And 
yeah, it's those slightly nuances um, of every instrument, even if you cannot hear it drastically, that makes the difference uh, in the final um, composition. But in the second part, oops, sorry, in the second part, when the expression and the volume gets louder, you can definitely hear them in the mix. Okay, the next brass instrument that I added was Cinematic Studio Brass, the Horns Patch Legato, and I played like a main melody with the brass that has to cut through. That's why I chose the Cinematic Studio Brass, because this it's one of um, its strength, in my opinion. But let's listen to the horns um, track here. Okay, so all the brass together okay so you get the idea um, what I wanted to achieve with that additional brass line Let's listen to everything, including the percussion, um, but without the cinematic studio brass. Okay, I edit it. That's already 95% of our track. What I added additionally was two instances of the woodwinds. Also the Cinematic Studio woodwinds. Um, I chose a flute and the flute pretty much plays the same line let me see if I'm right. The same line as my main violin. Maybe the violin one. Yes. Yes. You can see um, exactly the same as our violins one, but only the first half. Let's listen to the flute on its own. Okay, I think to hear the difference and the importance of the flutes, why I added them, we should take out the percussion and also the brass, maybe. And also the spiccato, <laughs> maybe. Take out the cello as well, that we can hear the clearly difference. So it was like these two together. The flute adds that nice character.
and without the flute. With the flute. By the way, this is a common technique that I've seen um, from many other composers, that they double the flute with the violin line. Um, that's why I decided it to give a try it here and I really liked it. So yeah, that's the flute, only the half um, of the track. And the bassoon, also from Cinematic Studio Woodwinds, plays this. Just to give another note, um, if we double it with the bass, so you definitely hear that difference um, if we have only the bass yeah i think you definitely can hear the difference um, yeah but that's pretty much it with the woodwinds that i added so all together the only thing that is still missing is in the others section um, all together sounds like this already pretty cool i would say 99.8 percent of the track is ready the reason why I added an additional instrument here was I felt like it's a bit boring in the first part only having the violins and the celli so I decided to throw in something completely different and I chose an instrument from the Celtic era libraries of Eduardo Tarilontes. Um, all of his libraries are amazing, really. Um, and I chose the concertina. In Germany, we say accordion. <laughs> um, and yeah, let's see how that sounds on its own. Just a few notes. <laughs> Okay, and together with the second instrument track, it sounds like this. And once again, if you ask yourself why I made an additional instrument track because of two notes with a complete same instrument also the concertina too the reason is um, that i was lazy again and i wanted to just have um, two notes in a different volume the bass how i called it i think it's minus 15 and yeah that's minus nine so when i had them in one i felt like those two lower notes here they are a bit too loud and so i went the easy way and if your cpu is fine with that you can uh, do that that's the only reason why i have two tracks here um yeah and let's listen to all together only uh, also with the concertina it just a little touch an extra touch but i think it's pretty nice and gives that adventure sailor pirate character to it yeah um 
that's pretty much the whole track. Very easy, as you could see. Um, that was the way that I composed it in the in the order that I showed you, starting with the percussion, going to the strings, searching a main melody with cinematic studio strings, um, the choir that I wanted to have as a definite part of my track. Um, and yeah, then in, uh, in the end, a few additional instruments like the bassoon, the flute, the concertina and the accordion. Um, that's pretty much it. And now, as I promised you, we will take a short look on our master bus, how I mixed and mastered this whole project. Okay, let's take a look. You can find a few plugins there and we start with the last one, the tonal balance control. I talked about that plugin already in my last video, so I will keep it short. Um, this plugin does not affect the sound in any way. It's just a control plugin to show you if your mix sits in the right place in the different frequency areas, like in the lows, in the low mids, in the high mids or in the highs. And if we play our song and have a look at this, That's always the moment when you feel like, okay, I did a great job. Um, no, just, uh, just joking, but it really is the final control if you have mixed the track um, by ear, how it sounds good to you, and then you use these plugins, um, and it also tells you the mix sits right in the different areas. That's the confirmation that you have a good mix with not too much low end. For example, I, I showed you the, um, the low percussion loop that I added afterwards. Um, if it would have been too much, we would sit here over the top, yeah? But the tonal balance control confirmed that I may let this loop in the mix. So, <laughs> okay, that was the tonal balance control. Let's go on to the next plugin. The FabFilter Pro L is also a plugin that's always on my master bus. That's the limiter. Even if I did not gain additional volume to this composition because I did not have to, um, I always use this to avoid some peaks in the top end. Um, so let me let me just play the, the track and you can see the graphics. If I would make it much louder, that would not make sense because then we have like much more peaks over there. Uh, it would mean that everything gets louder, yes, but we lose a lot of a lot of the sound in the top peaks and we don't want to lose that much. So we use this limiter to avoid some clips in the end and you can uh, set it up here up to uh, minus uh, 1 dB, but that's fine. The limiter is not doing anything else in this case. Now let's go to the plugins that affect the sound. Um, I have two plugins used here and I will bypass both of them. Let's open them next to each other. 
the Oxford Inflator and the Mix Centric plugin from Greg Wells. Mm. If I bypass them both, you can hear the difference. I will add the inflator um, while I'm playing and I hope and I think you will hear a difference. Once again. So it's a bit, but also not too much, but let's say it, um, the Oxford inflator, I, I, I found a video and the composer said it inflates the sound. Yeah, I have, I have no other <laughs> uh, description for that or no other explanation, but I think you can hear a drastic um, difference because it just adds life to the mix. Okay, so that was the Oxford Inflator. I um, pretty much loaded. This is the default setting with the effect button being on the bottom. And then I just pretty much raise it up until I find, ah, that's, that's fine, that's not too much. And I was trying to um, have it in a higher setting, like 50, but I felt like that's too much. And then I went back to 29 in this case, and it sounded fine for me. So that's the final um, setting that I used. And the last plugin that I used is Greg Wells Mix Centric. That's also a secret weapon of some composers. Um, I will add it afterwards um, and show you the difference. So I think you can definitely hear a difference. It just clears everything up. And also here I have a setting that is at 13.2. Of course you could um, dial it up much more. But when I've learned one thing during the last couple of years, um, there's one rule for using plugins. If you use more plugins, many plugins, less is more. Uh, and that is really true because if you use too much, um, the sound gets too polished and you cannot get rid of that uh, afterwards. So that is just uh, one more tip. Yeah, that's pretty much it for that composing video. I hope I did not forget anything I hope you had fun, uh, you enjoyed it, you learned something new. Please let me know in the comments below um, if you like that or if you get bored of those um, composition videos with only 20 instrument tracks and we should raise the bar a bit higher for the next time. Let me know anything. Um, that you have in mind, um, ask me your questions. And yeah, it was a lot of fun for me. And once again, um, if you want to um, get the MIDI files, you can download them in the description for learning issues, purposes, um, as you wish. Um, I had a lot of fun. I thank you very much for watching and hope to see you on the next video. Bye bye.